Is this the best product Bardstown has ever made? Today we're doing a review of Discovery Series 11. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Bourbon Hutch. Thanks so much for joining me on this journey through the world of whiskey. So I could not be more excited to get to dive into this awesome bottle, Bardstown Bourbon Company Discovery Series 11. So this bottle has made a lot of waves toward the end of 2023 when it came out and now early in 2024 when a lot of people are starting to get their hands on it. It's part of their Discovery Series, Bardstown's annual kind of release in that premium category, usually around $140 to $150. The series itself goes kind of up and down in terms of what people really gravitate towards and love. I have one other bottle from the series, which is Discovery Series number eight. In 2022, I believe that was my second best whiskey of the year. So I've had great experience with it. You know, I think back in the day, like the Discovery Series 4 got phenomenal reviews. Then some, you know, 5, 6 were maybe a little bit lackluster, according to others. And then now it's been about 9 and 10 that have been kind of mixed. But 11, by all accounts, is a hitter. That is partially due to what's in this blend, which one of the great things about Bardstown Bourbon Company is their ultra transparency. Even just on the side of the bottle, they tell you everything that's in their blend. So first component here is 73% Kentucky 13-year-old bourbon. So great age. The mash bill of that is 75% corn, 13% rye, and 12% malted barley, which is the mash bill of a very notable distillery, namely Wild Turkey. Rumor does have it that this might have been sourced from Wild Turkey, and if that's true, a 13-year-old bourbon from Wild Turkey puts it on the same plane as like Russell's Reserve 13, which, you know, speaks to the potential quality of this blend. Then you got 21% of this blend is a Kentucky 10-year-old bourbon. Mash bill there is 78% corn, 13% rye, and 9% malted barley. Don't know much about that component, but that's great age. Then you've got 6% of the blend, the least amount, is their own stuff, their six-year-old bottling bond wheat, which is 68% corn, 20% wheat, and 12% malted barley. I know that is much younger, but if you ask me that bottling bond wheat from them is one of the best $50 options out there. So by no means something bad that's going into this blend, even if it's younger. Okay, proof point here. I wanna mention that is 118.1 proof. So not super high, but if you ask me, anything in that 115 to 120 range can really shine because it won't blow out your palate, but it often has full force flavor. So by the stats alone, this could be a phenomenal bottle. Let's dive in, let's break it down, nose, palate, and finish for you. Just before we do that, I do wanna say, if you're enjoying all the content coming out of the channel, we'd love to have you aboard as a subscriber for the rest of 2024 and beyond planning a lot more great content. While you're at it, hit the like button on this video and then comment down below. Have you tasted Bardstown Discovery Series 11? What did you think? Have you tasted others in the series and how does it compare? Okay, let's go in on the nose. Okay, yes. Lots of oak and lots of cherry. Nice. Vanilla extract. Just a pop of like honey even. But then there's this raisin cherry fruitiness to it. And a good wallop of like sweet oak and brown sugar. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> it's a really good nose. It's very little ethanol, which is great. And man, it's just almost like a cherry jam. You know, a cherry oaky jam. Oh, it's good. Let's go in on the palate. Cheers, everybody. Oh, man. It's so good. It's so good. That cherry jam is just gooey on the palate. This has a gooey brown sugar and cherry 
marmalade kind of thing going on. And then there's a really nice layer of cinnamon and barrel spice that kick up on the palate that weren't necessarily on the nose. Again, the cherry brown sugar is the core. Then you got that spice, you got some of that vanilla, and then the oak. The barrel spice and the oak are just really, really nice on this thing. Um, great first sip. Let's go in for the second one, see if we can pick out some more flavors now that it's on the palate. Cheers. Mm. Yep. So a lot of that stayed consistent, but it tended a little bit more toward, instead of cherry, like a plum note, something a little bit more acidic, but in a good way. Kind of adds a layer of acidity, maybe tannic oak, just a touch of that. So it leaned more toward plum for me there, but you still get that oak and the brown sugar. The mouthfeel is really nice. Again, the gooeyness of it and the way it kind of just wraps around your palate like it's one of those jams or marmalades or something like that. It's really good. I've had a couple pours of this and it just keeps getting better and better every time I have it. So really, really great. Let's go in for the third sip and evaluate the finish, how long it lasts, and then also just recap the whole experience that I've had here. All right, cheers. Yeah, finish is long. Can't deny that for sure. Lingers for a long time with that cherry and plum kind of fruitiness, but it's all rich and dark, which is great. And then you get some of that cinnamon spice that really helps it linger. Although it's not overwhelming. I mean, the 118 proof here is really, really nice. It keeps it lingering, it keeps it simmering, but it doesn't overwhelm your palate at all. Gives it good mouth coating features, but again, it doesn't blow out your palate. Man, if I'd gotten this toward the end of 2023 and been able to put it in my Whiskey of the Year bracket, I have no doubt it would have done very well. It's, again, just to describe the whole thing for you, I feel like it's this, like, if I was cooking, making a homemade cherry jam or something desserty, but you're cooking it, so it's got some simmering heat, but then it's gooey and viscous. And then if you just layered in a bunch of oak, that's what you'd get here for me. I mean, it's phenomenal. I see why the rave reviews have come in because it's one of the better whiskeys I've tasted in my whiskey journey so far. Well worth the $140 I paid for it. I'll tell you that. It is, it's worth the price point here. I think that if you've been hesitant about Discovery Series, and sometimes it hits your market and you don't know whether to pull the trigger on that more premium price point, this is the bottle to go all in on if you see it. I know that there's a lot of people trying to get it and hunting it now because of all the great reviews. So it might be a little harder to find, but if you do see it, I think it's well worth the price. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it here. Let me know in the comments below. Again, have you tasted this one? And what did you think? How does it compare to other Discovery series? Do you think it's one of the better releases from the series and maybe of all of 2023 slash 2024 here? Till I see you guys again for another video, all I can say is keep drinking good whiskey and cheers.